In this video, we're going to look at similar triangles. We're going to look at two types of problem, ones where the triangles are connected like this one, and ones where they overlap like this one here. Before we do this, we're going to take a closer look at what it means for two triangles to be similar. Take these two triangles here. If these two triangles are similar, there must be a constant scale factor of enlargement from one to the other. So if we match up the corresponding sides on the base here, we have 12 and 24. On the left, we have 5 and 10 for the height, and the hypotenuse of these are 13 and 26. To get from 12 to 24, we'd multiply by 2. This is the same as going from 5 to 10 on the height, and also for the hypotenuse from 13 to 26. Since this is always the same number, these shapes must be similar. But it works in the other direction as well. So if we go from 24 to 12, we would multiply by 1 half. And this is the same for the other sides as well. So we know these two shapes are similar, there are some other observations we can make. We can find that scale factor of enlargement by dividing the pairs of corresponding sides. So if we take the purple sides, 24 and 12, and divide them, you'll see we get 2. This works for the other pairs of sides as well, so 10 divided by 5, that's also 2. And 26 divided by 13, that's once again 2. But it also works the other way around, so if we take those fractions and do the reciprocal, like this, then these will always give you the same value as well, which this time is 1 half. In these fractions here, we divided one side from one of the triangles by the corresponding side on the other triangle. But we can actually just divide sides within the same triangle as well. So if we take the green side in the small triangle and divide it by the purple side, we get 5 over 12. And then if we do the same thing in the larger triangle, the green side divided by the purple side, that's 10 divided by 24. These two fractions actually give the same value. And it will be the same for any of the pairs of sides as long as you're consistent in what you do. For instance, if I take the blue side and divide it by the green side, and then do the same on the second triangle, blue divided by green, I get the same number once again. These two fractions give the same value. Or I could have done the purple side divided by the blue side. So we get 12 over 13 on this one, and on the other one, 24 divided by 26. And these also give the same value. And so do their reciprocals. So if we take all of these fractions and take the reciprocal of them, those will also be equal as well. So there's actually lots and lots of equivalent fractions that you can write down using similar triangles. This is going to be helpful in solving some of the more complicated questions in this video. Now let's go back to the original type of question. The first one we said was when we have two triangles that are connected, and notice we have a parallel line at the top and at the bottom. The first thing to notice here is that this angle here is the same as the one below it, because these are vertically opposite angles. Then if we draw in this angle here, and draw on some lines like this, we find that the green angle is the same as the green angle down here, and we call these alternate angles. You can see we've got a Z shape there. The same idea works for this angle as well, so if we draw in a Z shape here this time, we find that this blue angle is the same as the blue angle at the bottom down here, once again due to alternate angles. In the previous video on similar shapes, we learned that when the angles are all the same, the shapes must be similar. It's even more obvious if I move this triangle down to the bottom here and flip it round. You can see the blue angles on the left are the same, so are the red ones at the top and the green ones on the right. But I'd also need to move down these sides like this. Notice how the sides have moved to a different position this time. If I put the original diagram back, you can see the 8 was on the right hand side, but now it's on the left hand side. The 10 was on the left and now it's on the right, and the 13 was on the top and now it's on the bottom. So let's go ahead and try and find these missing values now that we've put this information on. So to get from 10 to 20, we multiply by 2. So we must multiply the 13 by 2 on the bottom to get to y, and 13 times 2 is 26. Then of course we must multiply the 8 by 2 to get to the x value, and 8 times 2 is 16. Now this uses the technique that we did in the previous video on similar shapes, but I'm also going to show you this by using fractions. You don't need to use this approach to solve these ones, but it's going to help us to practice it, especially for the questions later in this video. So what we're going to do is pair up the corresponding sides, so on the left here we have x and 8, and on the right we have 20 and 10. We're going to use these pairs of sides to find the value of x. So if we divide the green ones by doing x divided by 8, this must be the same as when we divide the blue ones, so 20 over 10. So we form an equation like this. We can solve this equation by multiplying both sides by 8. If you multiply the left side by 8, the 8 will cancel, and then you multiply the right side by 8, we get this. 20 times 8 on the top there is 160, so we have 160 over 10, which was 16. And we knew that was the answer to the question because we worked it out before. So x is 16, and let's do a similar idea to work out y. So y pairs up with the 13 on the bottom here, so if we divide the purple sides we get y over 13, 
and this must be equal to any of the other pairs divided, I'm going to go for the blue pair again, so 20 over 10. Here we just multiply both sides by 13, and we get 20 lots of 13 over 10. 20 times 13 is 260, and divide this by 10 and you get 26. Which again, we knew this was the answer from before. Now let's take a look at how a question like this could be worded. So if we take some triangles like this, and we're told to work out the values of x and y. Notice they haven't even told us that these two triangles are similar. They don't need to because they've marked on the parallel lines, so we should already know that information. So let's try with x first. You can see that x matches up with a 15 on the bottom. Then if we remember that if we flip that triangle from the top upside down, the 8 is actually going to match up with the 12. So even though the 8 is on the right, it matches up with the 12 on the left. And the 4 matches up with the y. So let's divide the purple sides, so x divided by 15, and this is going to be equal to one of the other pairs divided. Now since we don't know why, I'm going to avoid the blue pair and go for the green one. So the green one would be 8 divided by 12. Then we can just solve this like we did for the previous two. We just multiply both sides by 15, so on the left we get x, and on the right we get 8 over 12 multiplied by 15, which we could combine to one fraction like this. 8 times 15 is 120, so we get x equals 120 over 12, and 120 divided by 12 is just 10. So we found the value of x, it's 10. One thing that's really important is you need to be consistent in the way you set up the fractions at the start of this question. The x here was from the smaller triangle. The 8 was also from the smaller triangle. The 15 was from the larger triangle, and so was the 12. It's important that you're consistent in having the small on the top and the large on the bottom. Or, of course, you could have the large on the top and the small on the bottom. It doesn't matter which way around you do it as long as you're consistent. But I put the small on the top here because we were trying to find x. So let's replace the x with a 10 and let's go and find y. So this time we're going to divide the blue pair, so y over 4, and this is going to be equal to one of the other pairs. I'm going to go for the green one once again, but this time it will be 12 over 8. Notice y was on the larger triangle, so 12 must also be on the larger triangle. And on the bottom we've got 4 and 8, which are from the smaller triangle. To solve this then, we just multiply both sides by 4. On the left we'd have y, and on the right 12 over 8 multiplied by 4. We could combine that to one fraction, so it's 12 times 4 over 8. 12 4s are just 48, so it's 48 over 8. And 48 divided by 8 is 6. So the value of y is 6. Now let's have a look at the other type of problem. So a question that looks like this. This time the triangles are both there, but they're overlapping each other. We can show that they're similar again by looking at their angles. So if we draw in these lines here, then this green angle on the left must be the same as this green angle up here. This is because they're corresponding angles. The same idea works on the right side. So if we draw in this line and then these two, this angle here that's blue must be the same as this one here that's blue, once again because they're corresponding angles. And then finally we have the angle at the top here, well that's actually the same angle for both of the triangles. So if I separate them off like this, we've got the small triangle, and then the large triangle, you can see all of the angles match again, so they must be similar shapes. But this one can be a bit more tricky to do. On the top triangle I actually have lengths for all of the sides, so I've got the 15 on the bottom, the 18 on the left, and the 12 on the right. On the larger triangle though it's a bit more difficult. I can see I have 25 on the base so I can mark that on, but the left and right side can be tricky. So for the left side here, it's the whole length from here to here. So we have a y and an 18, so the total length must be y plus 18. It's similar on the right hand side, so we need to go all the way from here to here, which we have x and 12, so the total length is x plus 12. Now that we've formed these triangles, we're ready to find the missing values of x and y. To do this, we're going to divide corresponding pairs of sides again. So I'm going to start by trying to find x. So I can see I've got x on the larger triangle in the x plus 12 side, so x plus 12, and I'm going to divide that by the side that matches on the smaller shape, which is 12. So I have x plus 12 over 12. Then this is going to be equal to a second fraction, and I need to pick another pair of sides. Now I'm not going to pick the sides on the left because they have a y in them. If I pick the base of the triangle, then I can see I have both of those sides, I've got 15 and 25. I need to be consistent, and since I started with the larger triangle on the last fraction, I'll do the same here. So it's 25 on the top and 15 on the bottom. Now we can go ahead and solve this. So for this one we would multiply both sides by 12, that would give us x plus 12 on the left, and on the right we'd have 25 multiplied by 12 all over 15. We could also multiply both sides by 15 now. So if we multiply the left side by 15, we'd need to use a bracket so we'd have 15 lots of x plus 12. 
and on the right hand side the 15s will now cancel so it's just 25 times 12. On the left I would now expand out this bracket so 15 lots of x is 15x and 15 lots of 12 is 180. On the right side I need to do 25 multiplied by 12 which is 300. This is now just a nice two step equation to solve. We can subtract 180 from both sides so we get 15x equals 120 and then divide both sides by 15 we get x equals 8. So we found the value of x it's 8 centimeters. Now let's do the same idea and work out y. So we'll start with the y plus 18 and divide it by the side that matches on the other triangle which is 18. And this will be equal to another fraction and it makes sense to choose the sides 25 and 15 again. So 25 over 15. You can see I've been consistent again and I have the larger triangle on the top and the smaller triangle on the bottom of those fractions. We'll solve this in the same sort of way so we'll multiply both sides by 18. On the left this will give us y plus 18 and on the right 25 multiplied by 18 all over 15. Then multiply both sides by 15 so we get 15 lots of y plus 18 and on the right the 15 cancel so it's just 25 times 18. If we expand out the brackets here we get 15 lots of y, well that's just 15y, and 15 multiplied by 18 is 270. On the right 25 lots of 18 is 450. Once again we just have a two step equation to solve. If you subtract 270 from both sides we get 15y equals 180 and then divide both sides by 15 and we'll get y equals 12. Now let's try a second example of this that's a little bit more difficult. So this time we've got this diagram and we're just trying to find x. So if we separate these off into two triangles we have a small triangle that looks like this and we can see the side on the left there at the top is x and on the right we have a 9. Then if we do the big triangle here the side on the top left is actually all the way from here to here so we need to do x plus 5 and on the right this time it's 12. Now that we have these two triangles we can go ahead and find x. So we need to divide the sides that match so I'm going to divide x plus 5 on the big triangle by x on the small triangle. And this will equal another fraction and since I started with the larger one I'll do 12 over 9. This one's a little bit different in its structure but we use the same idea to solve it. Let's multiply both sides by x this time. On the left this will cancel the x on the bottom so I get x plus 5. And on the right I'll get 12 lots of x over 9. Then we multiply both sides by 9. On the left hand side this will give us 9 lots of x plus 5. And on the right the 9 will cancel so we just have 12 lots of x. Expanding the bracket on the left gives us 9x plus 45. And on the right 12 lots of x is just 12x. To solve this equation we subtract 9x from both sides. If you subtract it from the left it will cancel so we've just got 45 and if you subtract 9x from 12x you get 3x. Then finally divide both sides by 3 and you find that x is equal to 15. Now I want to look at one more of these questions but there's going to be some ratio involved. So if we take this diagram here and notice we actually have labels for the sides this time. This is quite common in exams especially for Edexcel. And this time they're going to tell us that the ratio of AD to BE is 5 to 4. And we're going to be tasked with finding the length of DE. Now at first glance it looks like we don't have very much information on this diagram, we only have the 15 centimeters. So it might feel like we don't have enough to answer the question, but we do. We're going to start with this ratio here AD to BE, being at 5 to 4. Now the easiest way to think about this is just to pretend that AD is 5 centimeters and that BE is 4 centimeters. Even if it doesn't look like they're that long in the diagram, it's still going to work for the question. So I'm going to label BE as 4 and AD as 5. From here we just proceed with the question as normal. It's important that you understand that those aren't actually that length, it's just their ratio, but for this question it will help us solve the problem. Finally, since we're trying to find DE, I'm going to label that as X. So what we'll do now is separate them off into the two triangles. So we have the small triangle that looks like this, that's triangle EBC, and for this triangle we know some of its lengths from E to C is 15 and E to B is 4, or at least we're pretending it's 4. And for the large triangle, which is triangle DAC, we know the height on the left from A to D is 5, or at least we're pretending it's 5, and we also know the length all the way along the diagonal there is x plus 15. Now we just go ahead and set up some fractions again. So I'm going to start with x plus 15 and divide it by the same side on the other triangle, which is 15. Then I'll have my second fraction that this is equal to, and it will be 5 over 4. Now we just solve this equation like we have done all of the previous ones, multiply both sides by 15, that's x plus 15 on the left, and on the right, 5 times 15 all over 4. Then multiply both sides by 4. On the left we've got 4 lots of x plus 15 and on the right the 4 will cancel so 5 lots of 15. 
Expand out the bracket on the left, we've got 4x plus 60, and on the right, 5 times 15 is 75. Now solve this two-step equation by subtracting 60 from both sides. 4x will be 15, and then finally divide both sides by 4, and we'll find that x is 3.75. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next. Subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and go and try the exam questions on this topic that are in this video's description.